Hello, my name is Charles Davis, and I want to welcome you to the Ultimate Brand Design Channel. This video is going to be how to evaluate software and to see if it's effective for your use. My name is Charles the Marketing Maverick Davis. You can look me up on LinkedIn. I have 40 years of experience in IT and marketing. And one of the things I used to do when I go into these corporations was I would evaluate their operating system and their software products and their office products for performance. So I have a lot of experience looking at these products and trying to determine if they're going to be effective for that corporation. In my experience, what I found is that, and I'm going to tell you this story that illustrates this, early in America, they had the gold rush. And they said, there's gold out west. People went out and sold their property, bought all the tools and wagons and horses that they needed to go searching for gold, thinking they were going to strike it rich. But in return, what really happened was most of those people went broke and went home discouraged. We call that all that glitters is not gold. We call it falling for the silver object. So this is going to determine how you evaluate software. Click like and click share because one of the things I'm going to be adding to this channel is software evaluation. Right now I've got some evaluations going on about some lead generation products and AI, which will be really helpful for you. And if you so choose, you can subscribe to my free newsletter where you can get free information to help you in your creating your business and your perverse personal brand. Now, one of the things you have to understand is do you have the skills to use that product? What I'm seeing in the Facebook communities is that people are buying products and they don't have the skills to use them. Early on, I joined a video production community. It was really good. This was like in 2016. And one of the things in that community was we were all helpful to each other. Everybody. There were no egos involved. We're all trying to learn and apply our skills and help each other get better. In that community, there was a wide range of experience. I saw videos created for production companies in Las Vegas, in Denmark, from all over the world with that product. Brand ambassadors in Singapore. That video was out there on this channel. And that's how I saw how positive a Facebook community can be if you have the right people. But here is the drawback, too. You have people joining these groups who have purchased a product and they don't have the skills to use them. And even worse, the administrators don't have good answers. It looks like they're, they're grabbing AI-generated answers. Here's a perfect example. I just got off of a Facebook group and the lady asked... They're asking for other people in the group to evaluate their lead generation quiz. And I'm looking at this. I say, you didn't purchase this thing and you don't know how to set it up because the tool only allows you to create the quiz. You have to know how to create the content for the quiz. And that comes from brand strategy. You have to know who your target is. Like in my case, I know that my brand avatars are people 50, 40 and over, women with an education and a business, or 40 and over with degrees, men who don't have any technology experience, they just want the work done. I did the work to understand and I ran the test to understand who I'm talking to. So that when I put out my assessments, I can speak directly 
to them. That being said, when you purchase one of these software products, and this is the things that in the corporate world, they do this. It's not the product. It's going to be the support. Because if the support is no good, you didn't waste your money because you're going to run into some problems that you're going to need to call support for, and they got to give you some good answers. Here's the perfect example. Early in my career, in the mainframe world, I worked for a company named Pansophic Systems at Oakbrook Terrace. They were eventually bought out by Computer Associates, but I was on the customer service help desk. So when you called about that product, you were expecting to talk to someone like me who can provide you an answer because you have reached a point where you cannot, you've run into a problem and you would want a valid answer. One of the things we were taught to do was to take them into the user manual and show them where the answer is. The other thing that we were taught to do was we didn't directly give them the answer. We pointed them to where the answer is because you learn more by looking for the answer than me just telling you directly. And the end result was that you got educated and the support calls went down. How does this apply to what's going on now? The content of some of these software products is underdeveloped. They're talking to people who are experienced and knowledge. They're not, some of them do not have not created content speaking to the level of people purchasing the product. And also, some of them are behind in creating services for people wanting to just hire someone to do it for them. I'm seeing that too, and, and I'm going to have that link below because there are some people out there using these lead generation products, and they haven't a clue that you got to know something about copywriting. you got to know something about who you're talking to to pose the questions that's going to trigger the person to take the quiz. That being said, I want to show you a page with a quiz. This is a product that I use. It's called Outgrow. This is an actual quiz. The quiz is for solopreneur affiliate marketing. That's telling me who the quiz is for. It's for an individual looking to get into affiliate marketing. And my questions should have to be tailored to speak to just that person. And I'm going to take you through this real quick. The first one is right here. Are you wondering if your passion is a money-making idea? That is an open-ended question, and it speaks directly to people wanting to enter entrepreneurship. Do I have a great idea? Because I see so many people, like I just went on and did another video. You can find it where people, one guy asked this question. He said, I just created a podcast. Now, how do I monetize it? Now, the community page, the support page, they gave him this whole list where you need to do this, 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 and this. They didn't know, know that the first thing is, is it monetizable? He wanted to know how to monetize it. He didn't want to know, well, you got to be consistent. They didn't even answer the question. That's the other thing. That is the importance of support for the software product. Because you're going to spend more time up front trying to get that thing running. Next. Back to this quiz. Are you wondering if your passion is a money-making idea? These quizzes should be short. All you try to do is get them to make micro agreements to say, yes, I'm, I'm wondering. The next one is, what's, do you have a strong social media presence? And then I point out Facebook with 500 followers, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Anything with 500 followers or more is a good foundation to monetize your idea. The next one, this is the important one. What is your passion project? Because just because you have a passion project, that don't mean it's monetizable or the work it's going to take to monetize the type of content you're going to have to create, you may not want to put in that effort. 
I mean, a cooking show, that's a lot of work. It's one thing to sit up here and do a talking head or do a review, but to do something where it's crafts and stuff like that, that's a lot of work. That is. But next, I'm going to gauge their confidence. It says the manager turning your passion into a profitable business on a scale of one, not really to five. Absolutely. How confident are you that your chosen passion has the potential to generate income? I'm making them look a real reflect here. So look at the level of your interest and what your confidence is. It's real important where you come in to this journey. The next one is. Time commitment. A lot of people coming to these things thinking that this is going to take 30 days. No, we talking. It could be 30 days to six months to a year before you see any money from it if you haven't started out correctly. That's the other thing that that other guy said. He hadn't finished. He jumped into a podcast and he didn't know how to monetize it. That's backwards. You better know how to monetize it before you create the content. But anyway, and then I give them the opportunity and the quiz. Then we'll give them three options of how they can proceed. They'll get on my email list. They could look at my content. They could do some work on their own. Or the third one is. You can actually join my program. These are the kind of things that you need to look for when you are choosing a software product. Number one, your level of scalability, because some of these tools make you think that you can do this with the help of this tool, and that's just not true. The second thing is, how passionate are you? Is this something that you would do normally? Like, for instance, I would love to do a fishing show. I would, but it's just not in my cards right now. And third, time commitment. This is the one that a lot of people fall on. When they look at the time, they'll get out here on thinking there's instant gratification, and it's actually long term. These are the things you need to consider when you're uh, purchasing a software product with any of these tools, with AI, any of that stuff. My name is Charles Davis. I have a course, free course, that you can look and outline all the steps and all the preparation work you need to do before you do a podcast. And you have an option to work with me directly for me to evaluate what your work has done or to help you get online quicker. Click like and click share, and I hope to see you around.